yeah, if they're playing their exact lineup that they're normally used to playing, so it should go to game three. Okay. If they don't mess up. All right, a lot of pressure. Don't mess up is the advice from my panel here for Hellbear Smashers if they want to see a third game against Team Liquid. We're going to find out if they indeed do not mess up together with Moxie and Purge. Gosh, that doesn't sound hopeful at all if they don't mess up. My goodness. Uh, but yeah, you know, the Hellbear Smashers, they're bringing out stuff that they feel comfortable on. And the interesting thing I was thinking, Purge, is the fact that they have a lot of heroes that like the fight being brought to them, right? You've got a Venomancer who can sit in the lane. You've got a Medusa who also just kind of wants to, you know, just stay there and just shoot at things around her. Is this going to pay off for them, though? Um, it can. It's, if you're forcing objectives and your opponents are forced to deal or respond to you, then it can work absolutely, especially with a bad and backing those heroes up. It's absolutely can be a huge deal um, and make it harder for, um, for Liquid to engage them. Um, but with that said, they still have pretty strong lane heroes. Taiga has consistently in every game he's played Enchantress, like won his lane and dominated the mid game in an effective way. And they've also, it's, it's kind of like similar features on the Liquid side as well. Warlock is better at being defensive. Um, Enchantress will be the first on the front line. That's going to make it difficult for Elbar Smashers to initiate. So I just, I think I like the fact that Liquid has better capabilities to get solo kills across the map or gank better. Mm -hmm. Um, with the exception of yeah, reacting to either Venomancer or Dusa being tanked frontline. Um, it, it just should be easier for Liquid to get kills. Well, we will have to see, because historically, you know, Helper Smashers, they like to take it to game three. They enjoy, you know, trying to take that game number two and evening out the, the odds. But uh, definitely a bit scary from what Liquid have coming out here with the draft. Uh, but again, like we said, a lot of these kind of bread and butter picks, you know, we've seen plenty of Tofu on that Abaddon. He'll be able to go and just try to keep people alive, tank up a lot of that damage too. So it'll be interesting. I, I'm excited to see who's going to be making the first moves. Oh, both both players messing up their blocks. <laughs> Sumo, Sumo easy breezy himself. Uh, he messed up his block <laughs> at the tier two, and then uh, Storm Stormer let one through as well. So. Everybody, everybody sucks in the mid lane. I was gonna say something nice, Purge. I was gonna be like, what? you know, ever, you know, one person. What is happening? When, when are you the the positive one in this duo? What the what? What happened to you over there? I'm gonna just blame it on the fact that you're lonely because you're not hanging out with us okay. over here in, in Sweden. <laughs> uh, so far, completely fair in our uh, similar last hits in the mid lane, so it'll be okay. No major thing happening. Um, <laughs> Such a perch way of being positive. <laughs> It'll be okay. It's fine. Sorry. Continue. They both make mistakes, and it's uh, it's really hard to like point out major errors for sure. Um, Venomets are very strong laning here, classically against Void. So that last pick is uh, generally going to be seen as great for Rasmus here. Night. Safe lane, decent <laughs> Rasmus potential against Slardar. And Tofu should be able to offset a lot of the major damage coming from Slarder, but Medusa is a really slow hero, so she's got to be a little bit careful if uh, Taiga is able to get it picked up. If a sentry coming, he does. Two sentries on the way, so he should be able to use those to regain control of the large camp, and then with the large camp, probably bully Abaddon and the Medusa. This lane feels like it is going to be a bit of a struggle here for the Smashers. You can see Tofu best that he can, but uh, obviously it has to be careful in his positioning, especially as you get more levels online for the Enchantress and the Slardar. And for now, great damage so far by Taiga. Still got a self. Um, here comes his more extra... Actually, doesn't have any more regen past the self, so he'll be a little bit weak after this. But we'll be able to deward the camp now. So maybe large creep at three minutes. We'll see. Top lane, Rasmus doing the best that he can. Do get the water and snapped up here by Storm. Storm, a little sidestep there, making sure that doesn't immediately get cancelled. And Simel should be able to bag himself the one on the top rune spot. I think a pretty even matchup though right now. You know, 14 and 0, yeah. 12 and 1. No one's really running away with the game yet. I, I would say that Wind Ranger is a slightly more proven mid hero right now. Uh, most of the co-op games we've seen have felt a little bit inadequate. With that said, she just got little buffs to Scream of Pain. The mana cost at later stages is not as bad. It's basically the same early, but um, it has a better AoE and a little bit less mana, so she should be able to accelerate farm. In fact, Storm Stormer just didn't get Shadow Strike at all. And that's pretty fair, because realistically, she's not going to be able to kill Wind Ranger, because you have to use Dagger and a lot of right clicks to, to kill people. So mm -hmm. if Sumel could just use Wind Run and run away in dangerous moments. It's just not worth trying to outrest. So we'll just go for farming instead. Maybe that'll make it feel better. Bottom lane, Koifa collecting the first blood. You could see Tofu knew he was dying there, made sure that he got off one of those miscoils right off the end. That way he could 
just be as efficient as possible and keep Medusa's health topped up. But again, a, a it's like difficult lane. People, you're, you're like, well, if I could still suicide, I would have suicided there, you know? <laughs> That's definitely like possible. Rodian. It's like Rodian on Pudge right before, you, right before you're about to die, for sure. <laughs> Same thing. Uh, Top. Priest's Void struggling a little bit here, but he's getting a lot of heals from Warlocks. That's definitely offsetting his, uh, his the, this normally very difficult lane. I mean, I feel like we see this a lot coming out from Insania in particular. He's usually on a hero that's able to either, you know, replenish health or replenish mana, right? Because we had that whole stint where Keeper of the Light was very, very strong. So he's playing a lot of that. Otherwise, you know, you see him on the Oracle, you see him on the Warlock. Things that are going to help his core stay in the lane and, uh, yeah. you know, provide that sustenance. Yeah, it's really important. It lane stabilizers, absolutely. Radiance um, middle tower. Insane. He gets a side pull attack. off. Didn't get a stack off though because he had blocked earlier with a sentry ward, but still very good for lane control here. Um, McDay hits level four. Still struggling on regen a little bit. Insane is about to hit three. This is going to give a much better heal they're... towards uh, towards McKay. An extra 120 HP every time. They're quite forward here over here on Smash. Look at this immediately backing off the centaur though. Just running over. We'll put out a little bit of uh, of damage here. That's that's fine. scary. I, I mean, if they if he uses a chant offensively, they can just dispel it with a product shield. So, so like they are definitely forced to back up right now while uh, uh, counter pushes the lane and gets the last hits. But you know, the center will go away, and then he's got to go grab another one if he wants to keep being aggressive. Uh, there's a Seder Tormentor he could grab though, over by his ancients. So pressure continues. I'm just thinking in terms of you know if they're able to stun lock up uh, Tofu there, that could be potentially. A problem because he can't shield himself if he is the one who is indeed stunned up. So I don't think the the play yet. I don't think is going after Ace. Probably not. Mid lane still really even here. Uh, Storm Storm mm -hmm. getting more mana due to having blink capabilities. Rasmus gets low. He's taken down thanks to these fatal bonds. They're just kind of it's like a little bit of a flirtation here on this top line. You see Rasmus, you know, dishing out a bunch of damage. Mick is just backtracking or, you know, having Insania heal him back up and then they go back in for another play, but then Gilgur can you know, it, it just back and forth, back and forth here. We haven't seen any uh, hard committals, it feels, for sure. Yeah, I, I would not want to play this lane in the slightest if I was Faces Void if I didn't have Warlock. It, it's doable here, but without Warlock, it would just be awful. Oh no, the Hellbear Smasher! He's turned on his family! He's a traitor! That's fine, though. <laughs> It'll die now. Just a little bit of, just did a little clapping. Mm -hmm. Now it's going to run away. Camp is, and he's got another one. He's been able to keep the large camp uh, unblocked here on Kaiga's side and blocking the small camp of the sentry as well. So Radiant structures are a little fortified. bit more experience. Gives Quake, but tons of denies. He's got 12 already here. And that's going to put Medusa a little bit behind where Dyer's they would want to be. And there aren't really any attack. stacks made yet either. Here comes Stormstorm rotation though. Oh, they might be able to use a sonic wave and they take down Mickey. Easy peasy. There's not any way that Insane you can save him from that this time around. Yeah, and, and that wouldn't happen if he was full HP, honestly. Like, keeping his HP at around, what, 80, 70, 80%, it was enough with the Dyer's rolling boulder and the smash and the, the ulti. So, um, still no dagger points, but they just got the tower. That is a huge play by Hellbear Smashers, actually. They actually kept the Void down a little bit. Bottom lane, the bashes are real. Oh, that power shot not connecting, but it still is Goifa. will get the kill on Tofu, and Taiga will get Ace's Curry, and they're still making plays down here. They want this kill. Gilgar has made his way down, though, but there's just too much damage coming out from Smell. So they'll get that kill. Looks like Goifa probably going to pay for this, as Stormstormer is also here. Terrible uh, for Liquid, um, getting two kills for the one. They're not going to take the tower, unfortunately, but Isumo got some experience, got some good power shots in. Not the worst. Uh, Insania picking up some levels on the mid lane. Now that the, the safe lane has been, now that the tower's dead, there's no reason for Insania to try to play top anymore. It's just way too dangerous because the, the rundown distance is so far. There's no safety from a tower. He basically has to TP every time. So he'll just pick up levels on the mid lane to try to get six faster, but losing that safe lane tower is going to make things tough. Mickey's not going to be able to get as many creep kills. Uh, Venomancer is going to be able to control the jungle very well. Um, he picked up a fast tranquil boots to basically offset any regen needs he has, and he's going to go for a Veil afterwards. A great way to amplify Venomancer's damage and his teammates as well. Very good with Queen and Ping, and uh, Magnetize from her spirit as well, so this fast Veil will be really useful. You can see that they're just kind of struggling here to push Rasmus out of this lane, and again, this is a hero that he really enjoys playing, knows the ins and outs very, very well, so... Easy, easy. Will be difficult here unless they have Radiant's a large rotation 
has fallen. To get rid of this smoke pesky under, Hydralisk. Smoke under a ward by Queen of Pain or Spirit. We definitely saw that one, so we'll see how they react. The Storm Stormers almost got blink Dyer, maxed out. He still scared. hasn't gotten Shadow Strike yet. Kind of an interesting build, but absolutely can work here. And looks like Insania is going to be the one that tanks it here. Gets spotted by the Plague War. He's only level four here, though. Think, well, oh, they go right past him. Storm Stormer, though. Should be happy with this. Let's be careful they don't line up too hard here as Insania taking down. They go for the Chrono Spear. They take down Insania, but Samael is here, and they are just bursting down this Queen of Pain plus the Shackle Power Shot coming out. Down will go Storm Stormer. Now Mickey chasing after Gilgear is just going to push them away from his jungle. That's the power of the Cena smoke. They absolutely knew there was a rotation coming. They moved uh, Insania towards a tower. Sumail TP'd at the perfect time. Mickey was in perfect position, so getting the Storm Stormer kill top absolutely top makes it worth it. Top lane, they're still hunting. They want to get rid of Rasmus. Mickey has had enough of this bullying. The bit will go out. A couple of these bashes, though. Mickey needs a little bit of help here. I think he's going to be all right. He's going to be very close here, but no, he's got that heal on him. He's got the backtrack. He is fine as Taiga here in the bottom lane. He's just poking at Tofu. Does have to be careful because there is Storm Stormer making his own rotation. Off for Wolf, just nibbling over here. But you can see that Storm Storm is here. Taiga playing very carefully Dyer's here. Decides, all right. Is under attack. Oh, maybe they go back in, though. There's Koifa. No Blink Dagger just yet. Double fluffy Surprise. hat on the Enchantress. Well, we'll surprise Rasmus didn't get two points in Venomous Scale because it's a huge Precious. damage increase. Mm -hmm. um, with that said, Poison Sting is amazing in its face's void, so maybe that's part of the reason. But I wonder if he would have died maybe if he had more Gale, but or if he had his ulti and a lot enough mana, it would have gotten a kill too. Either way, it's fine. Still making uh, space. They push out the lane, so Mekke is going to jungle now. He's got a Possess Mask as well, a great item to accelerate his jungling. And then I want to still even, so everything's pretty fine for Liquid despite the, the early tower death. Look at Koifa. He knows that Tofu has just been sticking around here. He was hunting, but he will teleport out. Doesn't want anything to do with Koifa. Doesn't want to help accelerate his Blink Dagger. And Taiga's just taking over the woods here. They've got a lot of map presence right now coming out from the side of Liquid. That's yeah, not bad at all. Um, they've got Infernal Golem as well, so if Insania keeps playing here around Faces Void, he can help offset any potential deaths here. Break smokes. They're gonna kill the Sentry Ward for free to protect their ward. Ah. Rasmus is uh, still a little hesitant to invade. He's he's got the veil, so he has lots of damage, but his survivability is not super high. There's another Sentry. They'll probably get the ward here now. I mean, they spot Mickey over here. Gonna try to take some of these last hits. Try to bully Mickey a little bit too. They're managing to do it. They have Gilgir nearby if they wanted to try to hard commit, but. I think going down to the low ground, it's a little bit too scary for them. They're very close to the tower. Doesn't look like they're going to quite chance it. But Rasmus top. will be as obnoxious as possible with his Venomancer and try to bully him out of the jungle, which he does succeed he in doing. Radiant's Succeeding, yeah, that part is, is going attack. really good for him. Uh, lots of catapult Dyer's top or strong storm, unfortunately. Is under but or kids get a little closer, and forcing the void to cross the map a little Radiant bit has been helpful. Um, help our smashers are effectively warded into the, into the jungle as well, so Dyer's you know that they can control this now. Is this is pretty good for Venno, but on the same vein, the same thing's happening on the other side of the map. Liquid's finally invading the enemy side of the map. Um, Sumail has Maelstrom finished. He could dive this. A little dangerous. There's a a lot of people nearby. Taiga, all right, Koifa is here. The blink is then revealed as they get the jump over here onto Tofu. He's not level six just yet. They go and they drop the rock. They'll chase them right away here. Tofu's ticking down two of these bombs that were on the back lines. They're just gonna push them away with the magnetize, but that is, of course, the chaotic offering that just got dropped and they didn't manage. They got one kill. They, they the power shot came through to pick off Tofu uh -huh. as ran to safety, but completely bad for them. Um, and they're, they're still farming on uh, on Mickey, which is still good for them. His net worth is a little bit lower, but not out of the realm of possibilities. Um, I'm kind of curious to see what Sumail does item-wise. Maelstrom is the standard Wind Ranger build. I really like the Mjolnir build right now as an item to transition to. MKB does Radiant's atrocious damage per hit um, compared to what it used to do. It used Come to do like 75 magic damage per hit. Now it does like 44 or something. Voispa <laughs> just showing up and is going to get deleted here by Samil. Nice so jump there coming out from Koifa. And then that Blink Dagger changes everything now. Because now Rasmus, who doesn't have very many survivability items, can't defend himself if he gets gone on like that. Scary Elders, the Chrono Spear catching over onto two. The Sabat is not going to be able to keep Ace alive as they're following up Koifa. Gets a nice bash off. We'll follow up with the crash the line up here with the trees. We'll have that 
borrowed time. Proc Radiance over here, middle and middle Liquid will take the middle tower. Radiance middle tower has fallen. Didn't actually have stone gaze yet, but Chronosphere guarantees to kill either way. Uh, not too uncommon to delay it. Uh, but the tower finally falls, and now Liquid has the map control, and they have a slaughter, so... Good luck, Hellbears. You guys gotta fight into this. But Sumail's positioned really well. Let's get Gale. He's in a little bit of trouble here. We don't have a heal. We'll force him out. The work it now is completed for the Queen of Pain. So that is going to allow Star Stormer to make a couple more plays around the map. But the way that Liquid has been playing has been very tight, very grouped together. And it feels like whenever one of them is roaming, or rather whenever Koifa is roaming, let's put it that way, there's usually a plus one nearby. Oh. Okay, there it is. There's Rio the Orchid. There's the Sonic Wave. Is it going to be enough though, to take that Smithy? Stick him down. Yes. They'll be able to find that kill. Gilgar still hunting. Chase after Insania here. We'll roll backwards. But focusing over here onto this tower. Tofu's just going to heal up Stormstormer. And they're going to continue to put down pressure. Koifa standing nearby though. Just have to be careful. This is very obnoxious to play into when you're a Slarda with a blank. Is that every time you're just going to get hit with some of these disgusting little Hydralisk Wards. Like wards. Not bad. Hellbear Smasher is uh, fighting back really effectively. Um, to get that, uh, the force amount of Roshan. Uh, the Orchid is going to be really useful against all these cores. Basically, the only one that's a little survival is Slardar. Die. But Void and Wind Ranger are very vulnerable to not being able to cast spells. And that's why both of them, or at least uh, Wind Ranger, is for going for a fast BKB after Maelstrom. This is also extremely standard. You need to get this because too many disables counter Wind Ranger. But once you get BKB, then it allows you to keep uh, playing the game. But that, that was a huge kill. Uh, who got the gold? Stormstormer did. So you're going to catapult him even closer to his next item. Let's see what he goes next. Sanj Yacho would be pretty, or sorry, uh, Sanj Kaya would be pretty good on Queen of Fame, maybe. He's gonna oh go try dear. The Ace getting spotted out here. Does have the stone gaze, though, so we'll be able to pop it. Taiga and Koifa, and we talked about this. This is the hit squad. Koifa plus one. He's got the blink dagger on light. Look how tanky this Enchantress is, too, with the uh, the two fluffy hats. Medallion and whatnot. Thank goodness. The medallion, too, really effective. Uh, my, f five more minus armor. Uh, that's basically half of Slaughter ulti, so... Deuce has got to be careful when her mana gets drained. Minus armor is really dangerous. And like they want to make a play, and they find themselves guilt here. They'll be able to go shackle them up momentarily. They need to block off. Oh, they don't even need to. Never mind. Quite finishes off guilt here. Says, get out of my jungle. Really nice catch there. They'll retake their jungle, get some dewarding down here. Sania is so happy mm -hmm. about 50 gold per centuries at this exact moment. scary yeah i was i was confused about that like they both just kind of sat there for a minute in terms of like wait wait a minute i gotta finish up this creep wait and then quite like what am i doing jumps forward but she's already yeah, yeah blinks away i think they were both looking on the mini map directly <laughs> yeah, rather than they're both shopping you know like what yeah. am i gonna get next huh. a little surprise though that uh we didn't see the instant jump there perhaps they were waiting also for you know some some more backup who knows I gotta take in the top lane because he's a little bit more survivable right now, but quite uh, still fishing for kills. Dyer's courier oh. has been killed. Those plague wards, man, they are obnoxious. As Rasmus again, he is leading the charge into this jungle. And he's just being a thorn in their side as they jump forward over here. They go and they drop the chaos offer. They're gonna try to re-engage. Sonic Wave comes out though. Koifa is already dead now in Stadia. Running for his life, but Taiga joining into the fight here. Mickey looking for the opportunity. He just can't seem to find his Insania over on the side. He is going to go down. Taiga just, just chipping away over on the other lines of Koifa finding Stormstormer. Gets a nice bash off. They need more. They'll be able to have the lockdown with the Colonel Spear. Samael coming in hot with that power shot. And now Ace. He's already used the Stone Gaze. Samael is hot on his heels. He wants this. He's hoping he can line up the shackle. We'll be able to go and land it over here onto Misery. Shofu coming in with those aphotic shields. Buys a little bit more time. Taiga having to be careful. Did get hit with that veil. They need to just clear out all of these plague wards from their jungle. It's, it's really hard Radiant's to deal with these right now, because they're just preventing attack. Koifa from reinitiating. Yes. Him getting Gale as well, making a huge difference, but... Uh, I was surprised that they were able to kill Quaff. It was very, very close. The Chronosphere jump was just on the edge, right as his blink was coming through. Great pickup with the Nether Shawl as well. Excellent on most agility carries, because you have tons of armor, and getting just all this, like a free hood, better than a hood, is amazing against magic nukes like Quaff and Veno. So this is the perfect item for Mickey here. I don't think it's ever a bad game to find a shawl. There's always someone on your team that can use it. Just... Yeah, 
It's my favorite neutral item for sure. I love getting in a lot of games. Roll forward, trying to grab Tiger to get the slants off. And Sania trying to keep him alive with the Shadow Word. Another roll forward here from Gilgir with the kickbacks to Mill. He wants this though. It's going to be able to go and shackle Gilgir over here to the tree. He's going to burn him down very quickly. And they still haven't managed to kill Tiger with all of this healing. Over on the side though, Koifa is getting kited. Rasmus though is going to try to get protected here by Tofu. Still kiting, still looking for this opportunity. Samael though clicking away, trying to get some more of this damage off. We'll be able to go pop the shield again. Another one being tossed out immediately. Nice power shot coming through as Ace is wandering back in. It's a fun game. They're spending so much time near each other, but it's like kind of difficult to fully com uh, commit to a fight. But they can cover each other, so it's a little bit... It's not quite as bursty as most of the games we watch, but it makes for some interesting, like, a lot of cool decisions. Uh, BKB's been ready for Sumail that whole fight, by the way. He's just holding it. He knows he doesn't quite need it yet. If he gets gone on in a bad position, he's going to pop it. But for now, it's just going to guarantee that he gets to continue playing the, the solo killer for the rest of the game. And if you don't play Wind Ranger like that, Radiance you don't go position, you continue getting kills. You're, you're going to show up on this here a little bit. Uh, he's going the perfect build, and he's doing up bags afterwards. I do like how Taiga is now set into the role of cleaning out the jungle. He's basically the janitor over here. Or Dyer's Team Liquid trying to get rid of all attack. of these pesky plague wards because Rasmus has been an absolute thorn in their side. He's definitely playing this hero very nicely uh, and, and bringing a lot of attention over to, to him and allowing Ace to get that attack. farm up because he is sitting pretty nicely there. Not quite as high as Samael, right? 9.9k on Samael, but Ace sitting at 9.5. So. I'm just a little unsure how Medusa is going to do against a hero like Windranger. Like, I feel like Windranger is just going to beat her as the game continues if their network stays the same. Because no matter what, like, Windranger has incredible single target damage because of Focus Fire. Um, and Medusa, yeah, she does a lot of AoE damage, but she doesn't do well against a Windranger, period. Um, like, you, you just use Windrun and you run away. It's that simple. So I, I just feel like if they keep this net worth distribution and we fast forward 20 minutes of the game, I just feel like Liquid's going to have the advantage. It's definitely a problem that they don't have a whole heck of a lot of catch coming out from the side of Hellbear Smashers. They have plenty of slow, obviously, when you uh, take into account that they have this. Oh, they jump forward immediately. Roll forward here, over onto Taiga. Sonic Raven is just not enough to kill him right off the bat, although eventually Storm Stormer will collect the kill. That wouldn't hurt too much. I, maybe a mistake for uh, Taiga not to go with it this game. I feel like some magic resistance there would keep him alive, but it's still a lot of magic first, so... And they have a veil too, like Metric Resistance would be attack. pretty solid this game. A little surprised he didn't go for it, but maybe wanted to go this uh, Hurricane Pike instead, or not the Hurricane Pike, the Dragon Lines, just to deal with the wards better. Top mm -hmm. top it's not a terrible top idea, top. but being that, they lost that tower right there, so you got to attack. Here they go, blink in silence, there's the dagger, the ultimate, the full follow up, just a ton of magic damage. Pushing him away from the tower to lower his chance of the living. He, he was a little close to living, it was pretty close. I feel like if he had a. a cloak he might have lived if he had a hood he definitely would have lived there that or just the fact that uh you know he was silenced we got the sprites off perhaps he could have survived or no lots of kind of should have would have but uh over here on the side Gilgir, he gets spotted Radiance out and three. he is going to be a sacrifice oh, to use the mail and uh, they're in the roach pit though and it's taking quite a while though i'm not sure look at the scan they know they're on their way tofu has to be a bit careful he's been trying to tank it up looks like they'll trade over here on ace are they going to contest those? The question. Are they going to get them fast enough? They got the tier two bottom, which is okay. Like, eh, oh, they're moving in now. I don't know. I'm not sure about this Taiga. He's got the he's rights up immediately. He's going to just wander into the pit. He's just going to get Yule's up. So Ace will be able to get the Aegis, but the follow up is immediate now. Samael looking for that last. Not going to be able to quite find it. The Stone Gaze gets up from Ace. Doesn't want to have to deal with this, especially now that Storm Stormer has just picked up a fresh BKB. So he's going to be able to create more chaos in these fights. That is going to help for sure. Um, well, uh, so Liquid does get some map control. At least they didn't take the shrine before they crossed the map, but they regained theirs. I, again, I think they're like, it's not great for their opponents having Aegis, obviously, but I think this is not that bad considering. I don't really see them picking up a Medusa in a game, generally. But this does give the Hellbar Smashers the ability to maybe force some like tier twos or something like that. So, but I don't really see the Aegis as like a huge worry to Team Liquid because they have such strong team fight. They've got Golem, they've got Chronosphere. They can shackle two people pretty much every time after a Chrono is completed. So you're looking at a really fat stun here. And if Smashers, Smashers are not careful, they're going to get team fight wiped here regardless of the Aegis. 
I was gonna ask if this would be more of a, a farming Aegis for Ace, just to you know buy him a little bit more time, an insurance policy sort of thing. So I didn't think that Smashers were going to be super aggressive, but you do see them invading, and there is a courier over here. It's gonna be immediately ripped down by Stormstormer. It's the mails. Doesn't have anything on it, but uh, yeah, he already got delivered. It'll be fine. Um, it, farming, yes, basically. That's how I see it right now, for sure. I just. Uh, it allows them to be a little bit aggressive in their positioning, but unless they get a pick off, I don't really see them taking a tower. Uh, Rasmus doing the right thing. He's cutting the bot creep wave that they caught mid and bot. It becomes very difficult for their opponents to push, but that's going to rotate Sumail to his mid lane, to the enemy mid lane as well. He's almost for sure going to cut the next creep wave, and they just don't want to engage right now because it's a little dangerous. Um, and in the same vein, McKay is pressuring bottom, um, knowing that he's relatively difficult to kill. They don't have solutions now that he has Manta. And, uh, well, it's got the axe completed here for Ace. Let's go, they'll throw down the upheaval, try to slow them down just a little bit. The Sonic Wave, ooh, it's not close enough. Oh, oh, the zero, the zero times combo, Moxie. You don't need an Arcana for that one. No, you don't. That's an oof, for sure. And they are rotating back bottom now. They want to deal with Mickey. I don't believe they have Vision. The roll forward. Oh, they have the Yules, though. They can set up the Silence as well. They've got the Veil. This is the kind of damage that we were talking about, although they don't manage to quite land that Poison Nova over here. He does have the Magnetize, though, on Mickey, and he's just trying to run away from the Gale. He's got that Poison Sting on him, and it's just so slow. But where's your lockdown here? Where's your lockdown, Smashers? That was insane patience from Mickey. I would have meant it off that, uh, like, uh, the first spirit tower. silence or the gale or something, but he was just terrified that Cloth was going to show up at any time and work him immediately afterwards, and then he would die. But he just was patient the whole time. He knew he was relatively safe. They basically get a lot out of that movement for Liquid. They accomplished everything they wanted. They sank the courier, they cut the mid wave, they cut the bot wave, and eventually Hellbear Smashers had to back up. They didn't get the tier two tower. They didn't use any big cooldowns. And Aegis is a little bit closer to going away now. So great movements there by Liquid. Um, they've almost got eggs on Wind Ranger, which is going to give them a lot of evasion. 30% basic hits now. It doesn't get as much movement speed as before, but still will be. So here's the roll in, the gank on Enchantress. Look how quick he is with that healing ward on him. Upheaval helps a lot too. Oh, there it is. That was really close. That was actually really close. It wouldn't have killed him. It was still a, a, a poor use Dyer's of the ultimate, middle but, tower um, is under attack. It sounded Sorry. like the slow on Quap's ulti sounded like the old like AT and T like. Radiance top tower. It sounded like, right? like a weird Didn't like, it? like phone jingle. Yeah, I wonder if that had when anything. Texting was like really fancy. You're like, oh, you got to pay ten cents every time you send a text. Radiance now I'm talking even older than that, attack. dude. I'm oh. talking the before texting. Not going all the way back to rotary phones, but. Uh, Definitely sounded very strange there as Mickey putting some pressure here on this top tower. And everyone's really kind of spread out. You can see the Smashers are focusing over on the tier two in the bottom area. Radiance top tower is under attack. Trying to just get something done here. They're still working on the tier one. If you price a three two two, we can roll. <laughs> don't, I don't have that kind of money. Uh, this game is going so good for Liquid right now. Mickey just takes a tier two tower on pressure. They're doing such a good job. And Koif is playing in the area. That way, any, if anybody comes back to counter push this, they can get a kill. He sits yeah. here. TP. And yeah, Smashers take a tier Radiant's one, but all right, it's going to be Gilder. Let's see if he gets. He takes the bait. Next coming to. Well, the roll forward immediately. Eventually, yeah, there it is. Koif jumping right on in. They do have the sides, but he's got the Manta, like we talked about. Going to be able to backtrack away. There's hunting over here on the side, but oh, Koif KB just takes down Guild Gear. <laughs> and we're in the bottom lane. Tofu has been left behind. He does indeed pop the Taiga. This is kind of all over the place here. I think we've yet to see like one really big team fight, Urge. It's just, it's difficult for, for Hellbears to force Liquid to fight, and Liquid is just way ahead of time anticipating what's going to happen. So that's why, like, when they get at buildings, Mickey's, like, already threatening Tier 3s. They're just reading the map and reading what Hellbears are doing, and it's difficult for Hellbears to stop it because of the nature of their heroes. Abaddon does not contribute to ganks at all. He's a counter-initiator support. Her spirit is great at initiating, as is Quap, but that's it. Necromancer is just okay. Gale is very counterable here. And having time walk to be able to jump away for it, for it already just does enough. It's concerned that they don't have this lockdown. As Koifa immediately the size comes out from Stormstormer, but the shackle and latches off to the side. Smell just going to rip them apart. As Koifa will be the one who gets the kill. That was cool. Nice, nice play by Koifa to be to basically keep his hero in that position. I didn't see exactly how it started, but he knew his BKB was gone. Oh, I think I think it's an eggs. 
That's an axe on Medusa. Yeah, he's had that. Stunts. He has had that Radiance for a bit top. here. It's uh Okay. We talked about that way earlier. Roll on in here, but they have to be careful. Mickey is here. And they put a decent amount of damage. They do the BKB, so Gilgar will fall. They have to be careful again. They've got Insania nearby. He does have the Chaotic Offering. You've got many things if they want to go back in. That Shadow Word Shard also helping quite a bit here, but... is under attack. I don't know. How do you approach this fight right now if you're Hellbear Smashers? Because, you know, you've got heroes that want to stand their ground, that want you to come to them. And look at this Rasmus here. He's trying. He's being as pesky as he can, but it just doesn't feel quite as effective as he used to be. As Smell, when running over, looking for the Jackal, manages to land it. They get the Epotic Shield up, but look at this damage coming out. It's just not looking like Rasmus is going to be able to survive this as the Power Shot comes through. And down goes the Venomancer. Melpa's basically an infinite amount, amount of damage with Radiance focus fire. It's just way too much to, to keep him alive. And they just don't have good enough AoE stuns to offset it. Yeah, the Venomancer did pretty good in the lane, but not quite good enough. And yeah, Deuce is going to make up for some of these stun deficiencies with the Ags build, but ugh, this is the game's feeling really hard for Hellbear. It just feels like Liquid is not really punishable. I'm also concerned because look at the vision that Liquid has up and around the map too. It's just so hard for the Smashers to get out of their base and to farm or do anything because they, uh, you know, look at this. We're even seeing now that Gilgir says, we got to get rid of these wards. We're going to get ourselves, you know, a, a gem, try to make some space again. But it, the threat coming out from Liquid is just so scary. Oh, and a Mindbreaker drop. Perfect Wind Ranger item. It's basically like a it's, a, it's better than a Javelin. Um, it's an insanely valuable for, for his single target damage. I wouldn't be really surprised if he doesn't use that. They see Gilgir, they can see Ace walking on by. And immediately the follow up here from Samil. It's a quick pick off there with the power shot. That is just a gem that is down on the ground as the chase is on. They're gonna back off from Ace here. Look at how fast this Medusa is just jogging home. Doesn't want anything to do with this, but Samil is looking for that latch here. Wants to get the shackle off. We'll be able to go and find Raz. This is more than happy with this as they just burst him down. Unstoppable. And, uh, oh, okay, Mickey is just, you know, playing around with Ace. A polite hello, goodbye. We're coming for your buildings. Giving him the taunt. I, this is basically Everyone effective from that chart here because the Chronosphere, like, they have so much room to play with. He can just, like, say, like, am I chronoing now or is it going to be later? And it's just going to force Smash Smashers <laughs> to have to play so much more defensive. Like, genuinely doing moves like that and just making your opponents feel uncomfortable is huge in pro games because it just makes them feel like they can't leave each other because at any moment that chrono could be real. And there's like no punish either for him doing that because their disables are weak. Regeneration. Almost have a completed desolator now for Smail. So already gotten a nice present in the form of a gem, and uh, he's just got a lot of control this game. Just the way that Liquid is playing together and with the lockdown that they have, it's too scary. Smashers here, do you? Oh my gosh, Gilgir just trying to do, you know, a little bit of something here. I was looking for the power shots. We'll sidestep it nicely. Storm Stormer was uh, providing some support there, saying, you can do it, buddy. You can sidestep it, but otherwise can't do much of anything else. This damage is just a little bit low. I hadn't picked up the Mind Breaker yet, but they're looking pretty good for Liquid across the map. Their wards are great. Mickey gets to play up aggressive. Basically, all of their heroes just feel unkillable at this point and you have to worry about slaughter jumping out of nowhere and killing you. and anytime he's been farming picking up an ax here haven't seen one of these in a while but still a great item this puddles everywhere regen armor and status resistance if he goes in so very effective for initiating all right purge how many plague wards do you think have been weeded out by liquid uh i'm gonna say 40 my guess i'm gonna go with 41 48 <laughs> 42 oh man <laughs> oh no rasmus though caught in the middle of the puddle he is just obliterated here as they go and they find themselves a gill gear over here on the side stone gate does get used see mick gay is going to tie a little bit of time off here on the side and he's looking for the chrono spear he just goes in immediately finds himself this medusa the rest of the team is here they've got plenty of damage but they do get the sonic wave off so the bass them up and again they follow up with that cave and offering and she's taking 
Ranger, but she's not tanky enough, Purge, because down goes Medusa. And the hunt is on. They're chasing after Rasmus. They'll be able to find the Venomancer. Tofu now running for his life, but Mickey has come back here. He still wants this. As he just chases after him. He's looking to get these bashes up. He's like, okay, you know, I, uh, maybe I'll back off. Feels like Koifa doesn't want to, though. And no, he does not. As he chases Tofu all the way into the base, the Bash Brothers are real. And Samel will clean up over on Storm Stormer. <laughs> Easy breezy. Yeah, it's got the Mind Breaker and the Death Snail. Easy kill. And everybody on Liquid is so farmed. Everyone has items this game. Ags on Warlock, they just feel like they can do whatever they want because their cores are tanky enough. Radiant's they are doing whatever they, they want, Kurt. So they just, the, like, one or two of the heroes can just always be hitting creeps. Normally, you have to sit at five, like, all game. The margins are so thin and staying alive, but just the, the, the draft matchups as the game continues fallen. here were just so good for Team Liquid. The racks are going down. Are under attack. There's no buyback over on the side of Smashers. They are just going for the finish here over here on Liquid. Zany just dropping down the upheaval. Sustain your base. You don't want to come out here. Panic fixed up now here for Mickey. It's just looking a little bit too difficult, but they'll throw up the fortification. Look at Ace, he's so slow. Mickey running, boops him on the nose, and goes right back to towers again. Doesn't want to get too over eager here. Radiant's Looking again, time dilation. Jump over here onto Rasmus. They've had enough. Like we said, this Venomancer has been a thorn in their sides. Oh, the disarm over on the side, but Tyga's just dishing out the damage over here onto Rasmus. Mickey gets the kill. And now it is Ace over on the back lines. They chased after Gilgear. They'll get that kill. And there's just no mono left here over on Ace. Mickey, though, he doesn't want to stare at her beautiful face just yet. It eventually does turn to stone again, but they'll go right back to hitting the building. It's quite fun, though. He wants this. He wants this really badly. We'll end up rocking but he went just a little bit too far. That puddle gives you some regen, but not quite enough there, friend. The, they're trying. They fight back. They're going in again. The Sonic Wave, can they blow up? Mickey is the question. It's not looking like it's going to be enough because Gilgear, he will fall. This BKB over in Storm Server is nice, but it's not enough to protect him as this Medusa just tried to dish out as much damage as she can, but she's getting stunned up. Koi but getting into position. And look at these split shots. She's trying. She's doing everything, but Ace it's just not got the damage to take it down the side of Liquid Storm. Sort of gets chased down. The GG gets called. Liquid will take this in a 2 sweep. Really well played by Team Liquid. They, they got past the dangerous part of the game, the laning stage.